So yeah, I, I think I can skip my own introduction. I've been introduced. Uh, but today I'd like to talk to you all about Run C. And to get there, uh, we need to talk a little bit about the Open Container Initiative. So that's something that uh, IBM has been uh, involved in, as, as well as many other companies. There's actually a face-to-face -face happening tomorrow with, I believe, uh, over 30, 30 folks across uh, the industry, different companies. Um, and so uh, we'll be talking about kind of the next steps in the OCI. But um, a couple of things that I've done in the community, you mentioned that I've been part of the uh, Docker project for about two years now. Um, and some of the most interesting work I've been able to be involved in is the user namespace support in the Docker engine. So we'll actually be looking today uh, demonstrating user namespaces in Run C. Um, and so that, that work uh, enabled us to add user namespace support in the Docker engine. Um, if maybe some of you caught my community theater talk yesterday about uh, multi-platform images uh, in Docker Hub, in the private registry, in the open source registry. Uh, so that's been another big thing that uh, I've been involved in. Uh, but like I said, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the Open Container Initiative because the reason Run C exists is really because the Open Container Initiative exists. Uh, so last, uh, basically a year ago, uh, Solomon Hikes from the main stage uh, keynote announced a collaboration, a consortium of companies. Uh, many of their logos are here, and I think this may even need an update uh, with all the most recent members. But the idea was, again, as Solomon talked about plumbing, uh, at the lower layer of the container execution, um, how about we create a collab collaborative project where we can create a specification and a standard for what is a container, how do I run it? Um, and so there's both a specification, there's a reference runtime, which we'll be playing with uh, today after I get done with uh, the few slides I'm going to drag you through. Um, that reference runtime was seeded last summer on, on that day at DockerCon with Run C and libcontainer, which is really the OS level interface uh, that works with the, the namespaces in the Linux kernel, C groups. And now, uh, maybe if you're following along in the OCI, you know that most recently there's also an agreement to work together to create an image specification as well. What is a container image? And so that work is also started now. So that uh, gives you a, a high level view again, June 20th last summer. Uh, the charter was finally signed and agreed to by the partner companies last December. Uh, I believe this number 46 member companies is still correct. Um, we're very close to a 1.0 specification. Um, again, that'll probably be a topic in tomorrow's face-to-face -face with that group. Uh, it's currently at a release candidate level. Uh, you, can read, you can actually go to the GitHub repo for open containers, uh, opencontainers.org a website that describes more of that. Uh, so I've mentioned the, the release tag for RC1, uh, and I just mentioned the image, image format spec. Uh, that's currently, uh, I believe, Brandon Phillips and Vincent Batts, two of the maintainers, are looking to pull together a 0 0.3 release of the image format spec. Uh, I think that's even this week or next week they're talking about. And that actually is seeded with the v2.2 image spec from Docker, uh, which, as I just mentioned, has that multi-platform support I talked about. So they're getting into a cadence of releases, and, and obviously there'll be a, a final desired state of a 1.0 uh, defined at, at some point in the near future. All right, so I've given you a very quick overview of the Open Container Initiative. Uh, what is Run C? And I pronounce it Run C. I think. Uh, that's pretty much the acceptable uh, pronunciation. Um, but it's basically a client wrapper around libcontainer. Um, as I mentioned, libcontainer is that operating system interface. And uh, what RunC really wants is two things. It wants a config.json, which is, again, that OCI specification declares that config format. And if you provide a config.json, and then you provide a root file system that is the bundle uh, that includes, obviously, the binaries and its libraries that you want to run. Those two pieces of information provide enough detail for Run C to execute 
your container. So if you think of a simple transformation, uh, I didn't have much room on the slide, so it's not a real transformation. I don't so show the volume or how read-only gets translated to something in the config. But obviously, Docker run and a set of, of parameters can be converted into a config JSON that defines, again, those same things according to this OCI runtime specification. And so with that and a root file system, I can now run my container with run C. And hopefully, with some demonstrations, we'll see why that's interesting, how it's useful, who would want to do that. Um, but that gives you a, a very basic overview of what run C is. So what I'm going to try and show you uh, over the, the minutes that we have is that I, I really see run C as a potentially an open innovation platform for at least these interest areas, maybe there's more. Uh, but to, if, you, if you're interested in, in implementing low-level operating system level container features, Run C is obviously the place to start. And maybe even more specifically, libcontainer is that library that contains uh, all the interesting features that, that get talked about, whether it's secure computing, uh, checkpoint restore, PID cgroup control. C group controls, user namespaces, those all came to run C and actually came to libcontainer first and then have been exposed by upper layer interfaces like the Docker UI UX. So that's one area that may be of interest if, if you're looking, uh, if there's some new uh, Linux kernel layer feature for containers, uh, run C is probably the right place to, to start to float that up into a container execution engine. Uh, maybe you're not on Linux. Maybe you're on another platform. Uh, we have um, several implementations underway of OCI compliant um, execution engines for Solera zones. Uh, Run V, I believe uh, some folks are here this week, a hypervisor based um, uh, executor, uh, Intel Clear Containers, which also uses lightweight hypervisor technology. So, if that's an area of interest, you're on a different platform, you're on, you have some new exciting way to run containers on your OS, uh, Run C is a great platform for, uh, and libcontainer for, for doing that. Maybe you're going to implement your own uh, executor. And then I think uh, what I'll probably have time to demonstrate the most is that, um, in essence, Run C can be a great place for someone who's maybe at a, at a lower, lower layer of of container technology to quickly test, iterate, debug, change, config, see how that impacts your application. Um, and one of the reasons it's really nice is that there's a very low bar of entry. So when I run the, the Docker engine, uh, now I have to have all its pieces and, and all that configured properly. With RunC, I have a single binary. I've got a physical subdirectory with my root file system. I've got my JSON config, and that's all I need. I can play with strace and GDB and other things and do very quick iterations on that. So th those are just some areas that I think um, if, you're, if you're wondering what would I do with Run C, maybe that gives you some ideas. Maybe you have some other ideas and ways that you are already or, or have interest uh, to use Run C. So here along the bottom, um, as I mentioned, there are both quite a few companies involved in the Open Container Initiative, but there are also quite a few companies actually contributing to this reference implementation, and a lot of the major players are there. Um, those statistics may be a, a month or two old, but that's roughly uh, a lot of the contributing companies to Run C. So I'd like to take most of the time, this is the black belt track, uh, I'd rather um, show you hopefully some interesting things rather than, than bore you with lots of charts and live up to the, uh, the valor of the black belt track. So here, here are some things I'm going to try and show you uh, over the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. So obviously, we need run C. Um, I'm actually using the one that if you're on Docker 1.11 or above, you already have run C installed on your system because Docker has, has placed that there and uses it via container D. Uh, maybe you heard Michael Crosby's talk on that yesterday. 
So we've got Run C on our system. Uh, OCI tools, you can see the, the repository there is both a generator for config.json files and also a validator. And so we can briefly look at that. And then if you looked at the title of my talk, I claim that Run C was the little engine that could run Docker containers. And so we'll look at two projects from Jess Frizzell. Uh, hopefully many of you know who she is, the queen of containers, as we like to call her. Uh, her Riddler project, which allows, uh, we'll show it here in a few minutes, allows me to point to a container I've run on the Docker engine and basically create a config.json and some other interesting tie-ins that let me create that config. And then because RunC has no concept of networking, uh, her project NetNS does basically the same thing that you experience with the simple Docker bridge. So it creates a bridge, it creates a, a virtual ethernet pair, places one inside your container network namespace, and gives you basic uh, local networking. There's no port forwarding, there's no IP tables, just very simple. And then because we're gonna talk a little bit about user namespaces, something that I've been uh, working on for quite a while, uh, when we export, when we try and get that root file system out of Docker into our subdirectory, um, I'm gonna be using a tool called UID MapShift to convert the ownership of those files into the ID range of the user namespace I'm gonna use when I run my container. And if that's confusing, hopefully going through some demos will uh, clarify. So a uh, quick point of order, is that readable for the back? All right, I see thumbs up, so um, if you have glasses, get them out. Um, so first of all, I mentioned that, again, before we look at Riddler, there's the OCI tools, um, OCI tools command, which will, uh, as I said, I can either generate an OCI spec file, a config JSON, or I can validate a bundle that I have sitting here. I wanted to at least show you that if I just type OCI tools generate, I will immediately get a config.json even though I specified nothing about what my container is or does. And that's because the OCI specification already has the basic idea of what a container is. We know that it should have some capabilities, uh, it should have a root uh, path and file system, it should mount some, some special file systems, uh, it should use namespaces. Obviously, that's sort of the core of what a container is, PID, network, IPC, UTS, mount. Uh, but you'll notice it's missing things like there's no default user namespace settings here. Uh, there's nothing about setcomp. There's nothing about app armor. Uh, but it does give me a basic config.json that I could start to play with. And let me just make that a little smaller for a moment. You can see that kind of like Docker Run, there, there are a lot of parameters I could have passed to OCI tools to start to put together the kind of config that I would like to do, uh, including hooks, uh, what command I'm gonna run, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with OCI tools because I wanted to show you Riddler, again, with the concept that if I know, if I know Docker, I already kind of have an idea of my Docker run command, and I just wanna see, can I take what I've run over on, on Docker and quickly and easily create a config JSON and root bundle to run some things with run C? And so to start, um, I'm going to run a very simple Alpine container. Um, I'm gonna give it a name just to make it simple for other commands later. And I'm gonna make it dead simple. And we're just gonna run the date command. But if you've used Docker, you know that there's now an Alpine container. It's exited 
but its metadata is still there in the Docker engine. I could restart it. Uh, but at this point, all I wanted was the ability to now run Riddler. And again, uh, Jess Frizzell put this together. Uh, somewhat similar to OCI tools, there's a few things like specifying hooks. Uh, I've added the ability to specify specifically where in the user namespace range, what's the root ID and how big a space for UID and GID spaces. And so I'm going to do that with my Alpine container. I'm going to um, root it at ID 100,000. I'm sorry, that's the length. And the container name was Alpine. So at this point, um, I'm sorry, that's at the bottom. That's not very helpful. And I'm actually going to make a directory Alpine, and, and which I already did. Let's just go in there and run Riddler again. Hopefully that's more easy to see from the top. So it says config JSON has been saved. So it's talked to the Docker engine. It's queried uh, the information it needs to create a config.json. And again, this looks similar to what OCI tools output, but you can see that the args is date because that's the command I ran when I was running it um, via Docker, Docker run. Um, again, the capabilities are there, but now it's also set new, new, no new privileges. It's set an app armor profile, has a lot of the same mounts, but it also put in my UID mappings that I asked for. So root in the container is going to be ID 100,000, which hopefully is not an ID I'm using on my host. Same with the group IDs, and then obviously the devices. Now if I get below that, again, there's the namespaces. There's also a huge set comp section that starts here that is going to deny all syscalls, but then allow a set of syscalls that, that uh, we know and expect that, that many applications will use. And obviously that adds a layer of protection. If you haven't heard about SecComp, it's a, definitely a very interesting uh, security addition to Docker and other container engines. So I have my config JSON. It is saying that it's going to run the date command. And because I forgot to put a path, since I don't have a path in the environment here, I'm going to set that to bin date and then try and actually um, that wouldn't work yet because I said we needed two pieces of information. We need a config JSON, but we also need a root file system. And as you can see, I have nothing here yet. And so there's a separate uh, script I, I wrote that's just export root FS. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to tell it What's the root of my ID space so that the file ownership when I export it from Docker is shifted so that root is, again, ID 100,000? Um, and also, we'll, we'll write all those files into a subdirectory here called rootfs. So my flags for export rootfs, user is 100,000, length, and I don't, if this number doesn't make sense to anyone, uh, traditionally in Linux, uh, a 64K ID range is provided, so we provide that to the container. Uh, obviously, if you needed a larger space, you could provide that. And then I will need the name of, again, the Docker container that I created so that I can run the correct Docker command to export that. And this is sudoed. And so now you can see that I have a root FS, and it's actually owned by ID and GID 100,000. If we look in there, it looks like a standard uh, Alpine base file system image. So now we're actually ready to start this via run C. Let me put that up at the top. So I immediately got an error, and um, Normally, I would be pretty worried about what I did wrong, but this is something I, 
I knew because in Ubuntu 16.04, we had a bug report uh, just a few weeks ago or, or a month ago that after a recent kernel upgrade in Ubuntu 16.04, user namespaces in Docker stopped working. And this is not necessarily a very helpful error, but if you dig into it, you'll see that when it tries to mount the MQ device inside the container, a change in the Ubuntu kernel restricted that when user namespaces were enabled. Uh, that bug has been solved upstream. The uh, kernel 440-25 is in Xenial proposed, and in another week it should be out. But here's maybe the first thing that's kind of nice about Run C is that for the Docker engine, I'm now dead in the water because unless I know how to go change Docker code to not try to mount MQ or turn off that feature, I know that MQ is here in my config.json. And for now, I can just remove it um, from my config. And now I can run it, and I, my date command has executed. It executed as um, ID 100,000. It was user namespaced, and I obviously used the root file system that was here. But that's not necessarily all that interesting. Um, let's try to run, let's change it to actually run a shell so we can do a few more interesting things. We're going to say we need a terminal, and now we're going to say let's run a shell. So that looks a little bit more like what I would expect, expect from a Docker run Alpine SH. Uh, I'm in a shell, and I've got my, I'm contained. And I guess if we want to verify, um, let's just make sure. That was not very helpful, was it? Um, let's just look at anything running as ID 1000. So PID 22772 is the shell uh, that I just ran via run C. And uh, so we know that user namespace is working. Uh, if you haven't played with user namespace, you see I look like I'm root inside my container but outside any commands will show that I'm actually ID 100,000. So there's only one piece really missing at this point, is that, as I said, RunC has no notion of network, so you can see that I'm really uh, not able to do what everyone does when you start a container, you ping something or make sure your network works. Um, so let's fix that. And to do that, we'll run Riddler again and we'll add dash hook, pre-start, net ns. So as I said, this is uh, Jess's tool that uh, on pre-start, the net ns command will be run and do that, uh, that bridge connection with a um, local virtual ethernet pair inside our container. And of course, I can't do that without moving my current config JSON out of the way. And because I wasn't smart and save that, I have to make all the same changes. Let's get rid of MQ so we don't have that error. And let's just look that now there was a hook section added to my config JSON, which says I'm going to call on pre start user local bin net ns, and that will do the magic for me. So at this point, I should be able to start Alpine again. I now do have a IP address similar to what you would see inside a Docker container. And if everything's working right, I have external network access. So basically, at this point, we've kind of simulated same behavior we'd expect running the Docker engine on my laptop, but I have a config JSON that I can easily play with and maybe do some interesting things with. So let's move on from there. And I wanted to show you, um, 
let's let's start our our Alpine container again. And so I talked a little bit about Linux capabilities. Um, so Linux capabilities tend to control a set of syscalls. And so Docker, as well as RunC, have already restricted you from many uh, syscalls, especially anything administrative, uh, to add security to your container. And one of those things is that I can read the host name. So this is doing the get host name syscall. But I can't actually set the host name. It says operation not permitted. And the reason is because if you uh, look at the Linux documentation, you'll see that config sysadmin is a capability needed for set host name. And I don't have that. You can see the list here. I don't have cap sysadmin. You probably shouldn't add it to most of your containers because um, it really gives you the world in essence. But for a demo, I just want to show uh, what's possible here. So now if I start Alpine again, I've added the sysadmin capability to my config. Of course, I can read the host name, but now I can also set it. So I've, I've added this, this capability, and now I can see a change in what I'm able to do in the container. But I thought it'd also be interesting to say, to show that, that setcomp gives you a much finer grain control. So let's, let's look at what the privilege is by default that were given to me. Set host name was allowed. It was, it was also being blocked until we just made that change by the Linux capability. But now I can, in essence, per syscall, make a very uh, fine-grained change and say, actually, kill the process when set host name is attempted. So I made that change to my config JSON. Again, it's obvious that I can read it. If I try and set it, I get bad system call, and I'm unable to change it. So setcomp is a much finer grained uh, security tool that will allow you to do, um, you know, again, capabilities maybe are, are a block of syscalls. Setcomp gives me a, a much finer grained capability. I can deny all and then just add in the ones that I absolutely need for my container. So that's setcomp. We've looked at setcomp. We've seen user namespaces. Um, let's see what else we'd like to show. So again, all we've really shown so far are kind of very simple, um, sort of a distro container like Ubuntu, BusyBox, Alpine. What about something a little more interesting like a Nginx uh, container? So I already have one here that I've already got my root FS. I have my config JSON. Um, let's just start uh, Nginx. Now the interesting thing is that this is currently set with no output. It's a little hard to tell that it's running. But I also have a amazing Lynx container. Anyone use Lynx for their web browsing? <laughs> wow, look at this. Amazing. Um, now, NetNS list is an interesting command because it shows me uh, what, what Ethernet pairs have been created. Uh, I haven't been doing any cleanup today, so you can see that 0 0.10 is currently being used. I know that must be Nginx because it's the only thing I have running in run C right now, and it's 172.19.0.10. And so I've kind of hard coded in my Lynx container. I already have the arguments because I'm a horrible Lynx user and I never remember how to set the URL. And the reason you don't see anything is because as we've changed, uh, I have to actually set the columns and lines, 94.29. Isn't this amazing? Um, look at that. So we have loaded the Nginx page from the other uh, container. 
Uh, so we're now running li links in one run C container. We're, we're running nginx in, a in another one. Uh, but if we look, if we look at um, nginx, it's actually running as root because when I created that my nginx container, I forgot to set up uh, the user namespaces and when I exported the file system. So why don't we um, create another one? Let's user ns nginx. And I don't think I have any containers called nginx. So again, as simple as running docker run, I'll name it nginx, I'll use the standard docker hub nginx. Actually, I should have used dash d because I don't really want it running. Uh, but that's enough to, again, get that metadata in the Docker engine. Uh, so now I can run Riddler and we'll give it the same um, ID space, but we'll actually put this at 200,000. So again, one of the things about user namespaces in Docker today, we've kind of called it phase one because the way that layers are shared in the Docker engine, um, right now the user namespace feature in Docker is, um, is tied to the daemon, not to your container. So when I start the daemon, I point to an ID that has um, an ID range defined for it. If you've ever looked at the files, et cetera, uh, sub UID, sub GID, for a certain username you can assign ranges. And so the Docker daemon starts up and it says, okay, for all containers, I'm gonna use the same ID range. And when you Docker pull, we'll do similar to what we've done here with this UID map shift. We're gonna re-map um, the, the file ownership to that ID range. Well, you can, hopefully you can see that the problem there is that if I gave containers the ability to specify their own ID range, well, now I can't share layers between containers. So uh, we're working on that uh, in a couple different ways. We're working on some upstream kernel patches. Uh, one's called ShiftFS from James Bottomley, who uh, recently came aboard IBM Research, also a, a longtime Linux developer. Uh, so he's submitted a patch for ShiftFS, which would allow me to bind mount and basically filter uh, the read and write and do that shifting of the ID space. Uh, but because we're in run C and we control our own root file system, I can basically say I want Nginx to have a different ID space than the other containers. So let's do this and let's not forget that we want the pre-start net NS hook so we get um, networking and Nginx. So again, I've got my config JSON. It's going to run Nginx. And the only other thing is that, um, so when Riddler reads from Docker, I don't know if you've ever looked at the standard Nginx image, but it uses volumes. But the problem is that we have, uh, we're actually using user namespaces, which means that volume path is probably not readable by our users. So um, first, before we deal with that problem, let's get our file system. And again, we said 200,000, um, 65536, and Nginx. And now we have Nginx here uh, as a root file system. We have our config JSON, but as I said, just to save our, us time, I could go and fix up the ownership of this path so that I have access to it, but I don't really need to use volumes for what we're doing right here. So I will get rid of this section uh, and now ah, guess what we forgot to remove the MQ and we've hit our bug again. So let's get rid of that. And now we have a user, user namespaced Nginx 
and it's probably obviously sitting on a different uh, IP address than our other one, so let's ask NetNS. So we knew that dot 10 was, was the other one, dot 11 is this one. Let's again verify that we now have two NGINXs and one is running. Uh, that's pretty close to the bottom. Let's put that a little higher for those in the back. Um, so 24252, and you see actually it's using some of the other ID range. So 200104, there's a worker process using a non-root ID that NGINX has started up. And so we should be able to, to now use links to do the same thing, but actually point at our user namespace. Um, so again, it doesn't look any different because we have the same index.html. Uh, great, that's not that exciting. Um, let's actually go, so actually, now you can, we can kind of prove that I actually talked to this Nginx. There's a log entry that got dumped that we requested the root of uh, Nginx's web server. Let's actually, at this point, um, show another value, if you will, of using run C. So let's say I wanted to change a file, that index.html file, if I'm running the Docker engine. Um, maybe you've done enough playing that you kind of know where to find the layers and how they're assembled at, at runtime when Docker starts. Uh, but that's a little bit hairy, and depending on the storage driver, the location may be different. But again, because we're kind of controlling our own file system, this is obviously, I'm speaking only about development debug. Uh, you don't want to start playing with file systems, but in a debug scenario, this can be very helpful. And so this is so easy because I know exactly um, where Nginx is keeping that index.html, and I can easily overwrite it with something of my own. And you think I would have pseudoed all these shells beforehand. Um, so now if I go back to links, I have changed the index studies HTML, and <laughs> great. Um, so, you know, we've, we've shown that we can easily change settings like user namespaces. We can play around with set comp. We can play with capabilities. We can easily munge our local file system very easily for debug type purposes. We're trying to figure out something. We have a difficult bug. Um, and so hopefully that gives you a view into, into some of the things you can do with Run C that just end up being a simpler, smaller variant of what you can do with Docker Run and the Docker engine. Um, we are down to six minutes. I had one other potentially interesting thing uh, I wanted to show. Uh, one is actually the ability to share namespaces. So I don't know if anyone has played with other container orchestrators or runtimes that uh, actually even Docker run has dash dash net colon container colon container equal container name. Uh, so I was going to show that. It would probably take me three minutes to do that. So maybe we can do like a democratic vote. Would you like to see me hurriedly try and type all that or should we have more time for questions? Type it. Go. All right, this is the black belt track. I'm only sweating profusely. And actually, if you found this boring because you've been to Jess Frizzell's talks and Chrome was starting and Spotify and Kelsey Hightower's playlist were playing, come to ContainerCon in Toronto and Jess and I will be giving this talk together and she'll come up with much crazier ideas for what to run. Um, so let's try this. Um, so I've got Nginx running in a user namespace already, right? We saw the... Um, the PID for that is um, 24252. And so if I do cat proc, I'm sorry, 
proc 24252 ns. I can actually see the namespace pointers that the kernel is holding for me. Um, obviously, there's a user namespace, there's net namespace. So if I want to, let's take our Alpine container. Actually, no, I need, I need an Alpine container. So one of the restrictions of the Linux kernel is that I need the user namespaces to match if I want to share a network namespace. So let's quickly try and We're going to root it at 200,000 to match our user namespace Nginx. I'm actually not going to add the pre-start hook because I'm going to share the network namespace Alpine export rootfs 200,000 Alpine get rid of MQ. This is getting repetitive. Um, that bug is almost fixed, so we're in good shape. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Are we, we're not running a shell. And I want it to have a TTY, I mean, true. Now, here's what we need to do. Um, has anyone remembered what PID that was? Two four two five two. So if I go to the namespace section of my config path proc two four two five two yep. ns net, and we need to share a user namespace path proc two four two five two ns user. Does that look right? Um, I think we might be good. Look at that. I'm in 172.19.0.11. So that should be localhost, right, to me? Yes. So I've, I've talked to myself over the same network namespace. And we have one and a half minutes to spare. Black, Black, Black belt track, <laughs> represent. <laughs> Questions? Do we have volume? Yeah, uh, question about, so about the UID mapping and file ownership, if I understood correctly, um, your export rootfs script was making a separate copy of everything, and then you were changing UIDs on the file system. Yes. Um, uh, what, what hope is there for folks who are bind mounting stuff into the container but still want to do this UID mapping that we have to wait for this? Uh, yeah, the, shift the shiftfs stuff? Shift stuff is going to solve that. And Eric Biederman also has some patches that were just posted since DockerCon started that I haven't had a chance to read, but look like it's helping with that. I Someone see. smarter than me may be able to say more, but. Okay. Yep. Maybe one or one more question. Go ahead. Um, what are the key difference between Run C and stuff like App C or System D and so on? Oh, hard questions. Um, no. So, so you mean the Rocket Rocket yeah, folks? Um, so obviously, we're OCI is about working together on a specification so that Run C can be one reference implementation. We'd have to ask Brandon and the CoreOS folks sort of where AppSea and Rocket will come into that picture as far as the image format spec and the runtime spec. But obviously the hope is that we both would be OCI compliant implementations they could share. You could take your config JSON from here to there and back. And second quick question. Uh, when the set host name fails, is, is that be, because you don't have a UTS namespace by default? Or? No, actually, it's because I blocked that syscall. So okay. there were two reasons. The first reason was that I had so config. The UTS namespace is not enough? It, it is there, yeah. So my config okay. JSON had a UTS namespace. So you still need sysadmin. But I still need the permission to actually okay. make that syscall. Uh, one more. I don't know when they kick us out, but. Soon. Do you have any ideas on when we'll see uh, fully unprivileged run C? Oh, let's talk to Jess. 
Um, right. I, there are several people working hard on, on fully unprivileged, and I've been too busy doing other things to know exactly where it is today, but uh, progress is, is being made recently, so. All right, thank you, everybody.